Hey everybody, welcome back to One Seed, One World. So, we're here in the end of January, but I'm getting ready to start some seeds. And there are things that you, when you're starting seeds indoors, um, you know, don't get too overexcited. There's a lot of plants that uh, really shouldn't be started yet, depending on where you live. Uh, but there's other things like onions, artichokes, some herbs, flowers, that you can start seeds early because they need more time to kind of get established and, and growing uh, before you put them outside. You know, from some of them are like 10 to 12 weeks or so before your last frost date. For containers and stuff in your garden, you can use all types of different pots. There's, you know, round ones and square ones. You can start them in solo, solo cups these don't only have to be used for keg parties and beer pong people. You can start plants in these too. Uh, and then you can also use some of these smaller seed cells. These are good for starting uh, herbs in um, where you can separate them, you mark them off. And sometimes you can make like little herb cells of mixed herbs. Like maybe you do like basil, rosemary, sage, whatever. And then you've, you've got like a little cell where then you can transplant a mix outside. And then you can also use these big trays. Get my other stuff out of here. Um, these can be used if you're doing like a flat of say like microgreens, uh, loose leaf lettuces, um, onion seeds is what I'll be putting in here today. And uh, also these flats can be used as like a bottom tray because when you get like these kind of things, you see they got the holes in the bottom for the drainage. Then you can just put water in this big tray and let the water wick up through and keep uh, your pots moist, um, which saves you some watering time. Uh, and then it also prevents, of course, like all your water dripping down through whatever you have your plants sitting on. So there's some basic things on, uh, or basic uh, equipment that you can use on starting your seeds inside. Um, next step, we are going to go ahead and get our dirt ready and so that we can plant some seeds. So one thing when you're getting bagged dirt is uh, it can have either some eggs in them of like fungus gnats and stuff like that. Fungus gnats is kind of the biggest thing, depending on how long your dirt's been sitting around uh, or what. But when you buy the bagged dirt, um, it can have some eggs or maybe some pathogens in there. Uh, so it's very rare, but just be careful like when you're opening your bag of dirt that you don't, you're not breathing up all this stuff because you could inhale some things that might not be so healthy for you. But even more prevalent than that are the fungus gnats. So to avoid your fungus gnats uh, basically hatching in your potted plants once you kind of get everything going and flying all around your house, um, you can sterilize the soil or sanitize it. I'm not sure what the correct term is, but all that takes is uh, boiling some water and putting it on that dirt and holding that heat in to raise up the temperature of that dirt to kill off any potential, excuse me, potential eggs uh, of fungus gnats. And we'll show you that next. Um, just kind of a, a quick how-to on how to sterilize your soil. And then once that soil's ready, I'm gonna plant some seeds. I'm ready to get this garden started. I, I, I've been watching old videos and looking at old pictures of the garden and I'm just like, ah, I just wanna get out there and start growing stuff. So this is getting my fix on to getting some stuff started indoors and you can do it too. Doesn't matter if you have a lot of room or a little bit of room, you can do it in small things. I mean, look, look how, I mean, that'll sit right on your kitchen counter and you can start some plants. Okay, so when you're sterilizing your soil, you wanna do it in smaller batches just to make it easier on you to kind of uh, stir it up and, and, and keep things just easier to work with. Now, the one problem I have with this soil that you might not have if you've just gotten a bag from your local uh, big box store or wherever you get your bag soil from is that this has been sitting outside or sat outside for several months. And so I'm sure that there's been some other bugs that may have moved in and, and maybe laid some eggs or whatever in there. So I probably have a higher probability of fungus gnats and who knows what else in here. So what I have over here 
is a pot of water that I just boiled on the stove. And now we're going to go ahead and just pour this over top of this batch of garden soil that I put in. We want to get it in here to make sure that we get rid of any issues of if there is a fungus in here that might harm our seeds or plants or um, the fungus gnat eggs. So I'm just going to stir this in, let it make sure all that heats in there on the soil. All right, so that's all in there. Then you're gonna need some aluminum foil. And we're just gonna do a couple of pieces in here. So what this aluminum foil is going to do is help hold all that heat in there for a bit and just kind of let that soil cook a bit and that will kill off any of your problems with fungus gnats. At least that's what it should do, <laughs> but in general this should be good. Let this sit for a while, let the heat simmer in there and then in time you can take this off and then you're going to want to let the soil dry out a little bit. Uh, before you start using it because you don't want your soil to be overly saturated when you're planting your seed. Okay, so our potting soil now has been cooking for a little bit with that boiling water and it's still very wet, too wet to plant seeds in, but we can start getting some other things ready to prepare our seeds. And I know all this might seem kind of uh, labor intensive for just starting some seeds, but it is really helpful for getting rid of the fungus gnats and it's, it'll be worth it in the long run and give you less to deal with. So that's why we're doing this. Now, for one other container that I'm using is just one of these uh, little aluminum foil trays that you can get. Um, because my big trays don't have drainage holes in them and I don't have a larger pan to set in here that has the drainage holes, I'm using this aluminum foil that I just punched some holes in that you can see for drainage. And this will sit in there. We'll put our soil in here. That will let it drain and um, keep everything the way that we want it to be. So I'm going to start adding some of the soil into this pan. And this is where we're going to put our onion seeds. And like I said, this is still very wet, so it's, we're not going to plant the seeds quite yet. We'll probably give it another day, actually, before we finish up this video so that um, the soil is ready. Because you don't want your soil so soggy uh, because it's going to drown your seeds. But by putting it in this container with the holes in it, it will let the excess moisture drain out and so that we end up with, instead of some mucky mud, we're going to end up with just some nice, moist potting soil. Let it drain, get all ready, and then we'll move on to the next step of planting the seeds once this is ready. I'm going to have two of these trays, one for uh, a white onion or yellow onion, and then one for some red onions. And we'll be planting the seeds in here to give us some seedlings to get going. Okay, so one other quick thing I wanted to cover was just some lighting and shelving options. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have a, like a sunroom or, or some big windows that gives you plenty of natural light, that of course is always going to be your best, best option. Uh, I do not have that here where I live. All of our windows are just positioned the way the house is. Uh, they're not positioned well and there's not enough room really to grow plants the way our house is set up uh, in natural window and I don't have a sunroom. So I use these uh, 
little mini greenhouses, portable. Uh, you can use them indoors or outdoors. Uh, but in cold weather, of course, you'd want them indoors. But the good thing about them is they've got four shelves that allow me to put eight trays in here. Um, it has this plastic cover and that helps hold in some of your heat and humidity, which is especially important when you are first germinating your seeds. Uh, and then if you know the heat builds up in there, it's got this door that unzips and you can unzip it and let heat out and it has these ties up here so you can actually roll it up and have it tied open, like if you wanna open it during the day and then lower it at night. Um, once you get your lights and stuff in there with the plastic, that's gonna definitely help raise the, the temperature up in there, which is good for your, your seeds to get going and your seedlings to get going once they sprout. Uh, I've noticed a difference just with these four little um, LED light strips that I have in here and having this closed up, it's raised the temperature from the general room temperature to the inside of the greenhouse temperature by about four degrees. And that's just with those four strips. As I add more lights and more stuff gets going on in here, the temperature will come up even more. Uh, sometimes I have, uh, it's pretty hot when I've opened it in, the, in past years. Um, one thing with these, depending on where you are setting it, uh, because sometimes the humidity and moisture will build up and, and kind of roll down on the plastic, um, it, you might want to put some sort of flat tray, uh, like something that you put like underneath of a dog kennel is what I've used, uh, just to catch any drips and stuff so it doesn't get on your floor. Now, down here in my basement, um, I've got a hard tile floor. I'm not worried about little drips of water getting on it that I can wipe up quickly. But if you were had this set up like on a hardwood floor or something, um, you would definitely want to put some sort of tray under it to prevent any mess. Um, then last thing is lighting. There's a couple different options you can get. Um, this, uh, which is what you see in here, is just an LED strip light. They all come with a little on off switch. And then they also are linkable. So if you can see that there, a cord plugs into that end and uh, then we'll link on to the next light. So you can put like three or four of them together and then there's a master switch that will plug in. You can turn them off and on uh, together or you can turn them off and on individually. So that's your white LED, white warm LED light. Uh, this, um, I didn't plug it in because I didn't want to blind you, but this is a red and blue light and this these will work just as well. Um, it's a mix of red and blue LED lights, so it kind of gives you like a pinkish purplish glow <laughs> when they are on and they will work in a similar fashion. Uh, there's been different tests and science and stuff behind like what kind of light that um, the plants respond best to. Um, if you're doing, if you are purchasing a red and blue one, you want to look for something that is 20% blue and 80% red is a good mix for plants. But just using white will work just as well. I've used these for many years with great success. I've also used white lights in the past with great success. So I haven't had experienced like a, a big difference, but I might do some tests this year now that I'm setting up both and see what does better. Uh, for total strength of your lights, you wanna look at something that can give you about 3000 lumens per square foot. Um, that will help prevent your plants getting leggy um, once they germinate and get going. Um, it's hard, like one of these strips by itself is not 3000 lumens. Uh, I'm not even sure if it says, I forget what it was when I bought it. Um, I think it's like 1400 or something. But when, when you combine several of these together, then that build, you know, that it builds up your total square footage and, and you get brighter light. Um, and I can't remember what the lumens were on these. So you kind of have to do some searches uh, and, and pick a light that's gonna work best for you. I'll have links down below for all the stuff that we've been talking about in this video. Uh, and then also when your plants start sprouting, if you have your trays too far away from the light, those plants are gonna try to shoot up to get closer to that light. So what I do is I'll actually raise my trays up so that the tops of the plants are maybe about two inches below the light. And then as they grow, I'll lower down until I'm far enough away. And so I just keep moving it down on like little, I'll put like little boards or something there to help prop it up. Um, but right now, when we plant these seeds, they don't even need light. They just need warmth and moisture. They won't need the light until they, they sprout. 
so that's the main focus that you're going on right now for your first few days so they start sprouting and then you want to start focusing on your lights. But these lights help build up the heat in there so I leave them on anyway. <sighs> okay, so finally after all this talking, right? I, I'm, I'm sorry if this uh, is starting to drag on a little bit. I'm trying to condense it as much as possible, but for any new gardeners or those who haven't grown indoors before, I wanted to make sure I covered the basics to kind of give you some ideas and information on what you can do to start your seeds indoors. Um, but now we're gonna plant some seeds. So I'm, I'm planting two different kinds of seeds today. We got this Globo white onion and then the Wester, what is that? Oh, Weather, Weather's Field red onion are the two. So I'll do one tray of each. And uh, my soil here is still a little bit damp. Um, probably more damp than I would like. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and plant anyway and not add any water here in the tray for a while because this will be damp enough. I won't have to do any bottom watering for a bit. So you can see how many seeds there are in my hand and how small they are. Uh, and so these will, will be thinning out later, but right now we're just going to sprinkle uh, seeds across here. So we get good coverage. And then once the plants sprout and get a little bit established, I can uh, thin them out a little bit. And then once they're transplanted out into the garden, um, then I can uh, space them out appropriately uh, for their type. And then I'm just kind of pushing them down in here, uh, getting a little soil coverage on them so they can get started. Okay, so I got the two trays of onions in there. I got the white on this side, the red on that side. And um, I also hung another um, light in here, one of the red and blue ones in there, just so you can kind of see what the color looked like. Uh, and that will, adding that extra light will also help bring in some more heat in here. And I'll be adding more stuff over this weekend, more lights uh, until I get this one filled up and get more seeds planted because I got more herbs and other things that I want to plant. So that's kind of all the basics for getting your seeds started indoors. I hope you found that information helpful. If you go ahead and subscribe to our channel, you can follow along this year with the whole 2022 garden so that you can kind of see a lot of these seeds start to finish. We'll be covering all kinds of things like pest issues, disease issues, harvesting, pruning, you know, all depending on the plant and a lot of other cool stuff I'll be doing this year. So. I hope whatever's going on in your neck of the woods is fantastic, that you are staying warm this winter, and um, try planting some seeds indoors inside. You won't regret it, because it's always fun to grow some stuff inside. And it gives you that head start on the spring uh, and, and for getting your plants outside. So, anyway, that's it. We'll see you all again soon. Have a great day. Namaste. Go play in the dirt.